What's up, squad? <laughs> you said Michelle was over there on binge worth. I was, I was. Then when it got to the commercial break, I was like, child, let me go. I'm gonna have to finish watching it uh after the live. Y'all <laughs> definitely support binge worthy because I'm like, I want to listen. I'm trying to figure out what the tea was over there. So welcome, welcome. Hey y'all, yes, yes, smash that like, smash that like. Come on in, come on in. Y'all know the drill. Can you hear me? Okay. Is the sound sounding? Even if you can't, it don't matter because we're about to get started either way. Go ahead and like this video, and we're about to get started in just a minute. Get ready, cause you about to be an A A T L. That's your being a blogger. More than a blogger. That's your being a blogger. You are more than I am more than a blogger. I am more than a blogger. The blog got it. 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 Yes, Zamzinga. It was the long version. Can y'all hear me now? Do I still sound like a robot? Press one if I sound like a robot. Press two if the sound is clear. Please let me know because I was pressing buttons and stuff. Do I sound okay now? Let me see what y'all saying over here. Hey, hey, y'all already putting the pink hearts in the chat for Mama Brown. I see y'all. I sound good now. Okay, thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. The sound is better. Thank you. Shout out to my mods. Okay. Princess AG, uh, Simply Shasha, Miss Kiki, Jezebel, Sada, Zamzagra. I see all y'all in here. C. Patterson. What's C. Patterson at? Um, hey, y'all. Definitely put your pink hearts in the chat for Mama Brown. I guess she's still here. It's a little late. It's like 10, 20 in the ATL. I don't know. She might be up. She might be up. Okay. And shout out to all of the green in the building. Y'all know these are our channel sponsors. You can be a channel sponsor too. Only thing you got to do is click that join button and you will be a part of our esteemed community over here. You know, we are smart over here. We is smart. Okay. Look. We don't uh we don't like run with the status quo. We don't make up rumors and gossip about people. <laughs> we do a little gossiping, okay? But we don't make up lies, okay? We don't do none of that over here. We tell the truth over here. And sometimes the truth hurts, okay? Shout out to the squad. Shout out to my Patreon members. Uh patreon.com. I am A T Alien. We might do a, a after dark tonight. Uh, depending on how long this live goes, okay? I've been doing a lot of drive alongs, ride alongs lately, and I'm like, oh, I feel like I've been working. <laughs> I feel like I've been working. Shout out to Sickle. Sickle, I forgot I gave you a rich friend. Shout out to Sickle, okay? Um, yes, child, on group one, but we're going to get that. We're going to get that. Y'all see the title. We're going to talk about the escape members, child. You know, they have all been responding. They've been scrambling ever since straight from the A.com. I.E. me. <laughs> Uh, you know, leaked the document that you know basically said that Mona Scott Young had been put on notice, Mona Scott and Live Nation. Now, I well, I'm gonna get on that in a minute. We're gonna talk about that because they have been responding to this trademark dispute, and I'm going to share my thoughts on it. You know, my 
my legal thoughts. You know, I'm a lawyer. <laughs> I'm lying. I'm lying. I'm a textbook attorney. I read and I feel like I know the law, but I don't. Okay. I just feel like I've been in court enough to, to pretend to be one, to play one on YouTube. Okay. Uh, and we also have Portia and Simon's update. You know, they went to court on the fourth, honey. They went to court on the fourth and everybody's trying to figure out what had happened. Did, did Portia force her way back into that man's house? Cause she been posting pictures and subliminal messages and all kind of things. And meanwhile, Simon is in Dubai. We're going to talk about that as well. Okay. Shout out to my member, Holistic Healing Savory Meals. Member for five months that I am the hottest blogger. Thank you so much, friend. I appreciate you, friend. And C. Patterson, our esteemed mod, C. Patterson is putting the link to the uh, source of the information about escape. I don't know who I want to talk about first, though. Uh, but before I talk about any of that, yes, Portia, Portia, Portia. Before I talk about any of that, I would like to send healing vibes to all the people in New York and New Jersey. That 4.8 magnitude earthquake, I finally got around to seeing it. I was over there on uh, Sandra Rose saying Sandra Rose had pictures of this building that was like toppling over. I was like, what is the, what is going on? Are y'all okay? They said it was a 4.8 magnitude earthquake. Oh, just days after uh, one hit Taiwan, okay? A 7.3 had hit, had struck Taiwan on April 3rd, and then on April 4th, a 4.8 hit. Dang, severely damaged building is picture. Oh, the building is from China. See, Sandra tricked me. Let me show y'all what I'm looking at. Sandra tricked me. I thought that was New Jersey. I'm like, they, they toppling buildings over there in New Jersey. Mm -mm, that ain't Jersey. That is, uh, <laughs> look, Sandra tricked me. It said 4.8 magnitude. And then I see the building. I'm like, Sandra, what is that? But apparently that's the building that was in uh, Taiwan. Okay. You said it's global warming. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. And all y'all was mad at me talking about, you need to be looking at the news. No, I don't. Because I can't stop it if it's coming. And sometimes I don't want to know, okay? Um, it says uh, Friday's earthquake struck along the East Coast around 1030, okay? No serious injuries were reported, okay? Well, that's a blessing. That is a blessing. Somebody told uh, ABC News in New York that it felt like a roller coaster under the house going 1,000 miles an hour. That felt like a subway train was running under the couch, said Rocco Petropola, who was in an eighth floor Manhattan apartment when the earthquake struck. See, that's why I'm glad I don't live in high rise no more. I mean, you know, I love the high rise. I love the view, all of that. But ever since that building toppled, I don't even want to say, in Miami, it's like, oh, child, the building be shaking. If it's some high winds, if it's a storm, if it's a tornado, the only thing you be thinking about is that building swaying. And they're made to sway, by the way. You know, architects, you know, make uh, high buildings you know, they can sway, but it's like, damn, child, I'm, I'm scared. I don't want no earth, be on the earthquake and be up there. Mm -mm. But I'm glad that y'all um are safe, okay? You said high rises near the water? Yes, high rises near the water, child. A shame. But, anywho, moving on. You said you lived in a mid-rise and you moved after that. I Listen, I used to live on the 16th floor. Was it 16, 17? I can't even remember how long ago it's been. It's been four years. I used to live up there, child, in Buckhead. It was a beautiful view, but so, you know, the view is, is, is that's all you're paying for is the view because all everything else is like you got to get a cart to bring your stuff up. You can't go from the house to the car quickly. It's just like too much going on. Now, I, I prefer, you know, the luxury of parking in my garage and right and walking directly into the house. That's just me, though. But anyway, hey, y'all, how y'all doing? Come on in. You said, come on. In for the monologue. We waiting on y'all to come on in. Okay, definitely come on in because you know we got lots of tea over here and we got good juicy tea. We ain't making up no lies about nobody being being evicted from no bus. We making no lies about nobody being broke. We ain't making up no lies. We telling you the truth around here, and it ain't no allegedly. <laughs> we are telling the truth, and if you get mad at me telling the truth, I don't know what to tell you. Okay. Uh, right. Absolutely amazing. Hey, friends, that part, that part and hit that like button on your way in here. Um, let me go ahead 
and start with Portia and Simon. Okay, since you know it is what it is, what it is, what it is. Okay, since I got escape on the on the on the uh cover, I guess I'll start with the low ball low ball today, and that would be Portia and Simon because we've been talking about Portia and Simon every day. That divorce ain't going nowhere, no time soon. We don't even know why Portia left that man. Portia didn't tell us why she left that man until that man started fighting back. And then when he started fighting back, then all of us all of a sudden Portia was like, I married a stranger. You were supposed to protect me and PJ, and you did not do that. Girl, any man that'll buy you a $7 million house seems to be protecting you to me, okay? And remember, Simon came up and told y'all Portia kept forcing herself into the house, brought a man with a gun. Oh, my God, it was so much going on over there. And we was like, is this going to play out on The Real Housewives of Atlanta? Are we going to see all this? Is season 16 going to be the best ever? But Simon said, uh uh uh, not so fast. Uh uh, since you're trying to bogart your way in my house, the first thing I'm going to do is tell Bravo and True Entertainment they can't film in my house. Mm. And people was like, well, that's Portia House too. Well, Portia name ain't on the deed. <laughs> Portia name made on the D and, Por and Simon made sure of that, honey. Portia has not contributed to the expenses of the household. Portia ain't paid not one mortgage payment. Portia's name is not on the D. He bought the house technically before they got married, before they said, I do. Simon has sent all the documents to Bravo and Bravo said, okay. They agreed to it. They they said, uh, okay, we, we ain't going to do it. We ain't going to film at the house, okay? But Portia was like, well, they ain't going to film, but why are you gone? I'm going to film my, my Amazon Live. Why are you gone? I'm going to film my um my Instagrams. I'm going to film while you gone. So meanwhile, let me go to Portia's Instagram page. <sighs> Portia been throwing subliminal messages. I don't understand. Why is she doing this to this man? If you don't want to be with him, let him go. He said, why did she not get to know him first? That's what I thought what, what, what would happen before you married somebody and committed your life to them. Is, isn't marriage a commitment? Before you did all that, wouldn't you have gotten to know someone? Hmm. Or maybe you were just too bad at your baby daddy. You just trying to get married because your baby daddy wouldn't marry you. I don't know what was going on, child. I done went back and watched um, Portia's Family Matters. <laughs> To, to get my mind right to trying to figure out what's going on i have to put my investigative hat on like why did Portia marry simon why did she take that man from fallon who was pregnant by the pool boy anyway i'm digressing why did she do all of that to to arrive right here i'm just confused but anyway on the day of court Portia po posted this to her instagram which had many people in the comment section really feeling the ways because like you know when she was posting everything uh with simon when they was in dubai and in costa rica and everywhere showing us this glamorous lifestyle on all them private jets that he allegedly didn't pay for uh, allegedly i don't know but portia was always hashtagging be his peace now she goes to court <laughs> now she goes to court because you know simon didn't filed an emergency motion to get Portia out the house to file a restraining order against Portia. And Portia wants, you know, Simon to the, the judge to execute the prenup to the letter of the law, even though the divorce ain't final. And Simon was like, no, I was blindsided. You can't execute the prenup without the divorce being final. However, according to my sources, the judge must have, um, must have, uh, well, actually, the judge did rule in Portia's favor and said that Portia can stay there while they adjudicate the merits of the divorce. Okay. So I'm like, oh, I bet Simon was far hot, honey. I bet Simon was far hot. All his stuff still there. All his 15 Rolls Royces still in the garage. Portia had packed up and left three, four times. And now she is back. Her and her sister that moved in. With Pilar and the cousin, child, everybody in there but Simon and his family. Now she hashtag and be his peace on the day of court. I'm not the one. I'm the one and not the two. Okay. 
And so look at being worthy. Good luck today. Somebody said head at the court. And somebody said, sit down and give that tail a rest. Be your own piece. Oh, not give that tail a rest. Oh, Team Portia, she's not pressed. She's pressure. They could never make me hate you. So, you know, she went to court. She put on her court outfit. Okay. And uh, there is that. You said, so Simon is a cheater. I, what? How does that mean that Simon is a cheater? Portia, the one who filed the thing. She didn't file for irreconcilable differences or, or, um, cheating did she that i mean portia didn't say any of that in her divorce documents i would think that if he was cheating that would be the first thing that would have came out in her divorce documents but apparently it was not she did not give a reason uh simon should have planted cameras throughout that house to keep an eye on his her and his home mm. well uh portia and her mama tore all the cameras down they tore all the cameras stop it they tore all the cameras down and so um simon through his attorney, had actually um, sent over some character witnesses to the judge, okay? Because apparently they was like, we, we need the judge to know what is going on in this house. One of the character witnesses was, who was this person right here? One of this, per this person was the housekeeper slash nanny. Hey, Bingeworthy, shout out to Bingeworthy, y'all. Hey, Biggie. One of the witnesses was the housekeeper. So the housekeeper uh, submitted a character witness to uh, Simon, uh, to the to the judge on behalf of Simon Guabadia. And the thing is, in these witness uh, affidavits, there's a sprinkling of tea in them about, you know, what may or may have happened between the couple. Okay, so we was looking. Hold on, hold on. Let me stop. No, oh, not stop the cam. Let me put something up here and show y'all. Mm -hmm. I ain't even put my stamp on them. I'm just giving shit for free, but that's okay. I know people gonna screenshot and they gonna act like they got it, but I'm just gonna show y'all a little bit. <laughs> I'm gonna show y'all a little bit. Where am I? I'm gonna put me right there. Okay, I'm gonna put this right here. Oh, did I put it up there? Sure. Okay, there it is. Right. Okay. Now, um, this is uh, one of the um, one of the character witnesses and said, uh, I know both Simon and Portia. I have been working for Simon Guabadia since May 2020 before he got married to Portia. I started off working for him part time and then I began working full time before he dated, started dating Portia. I will always help take care of Simon's kids. When Portia and her daughter Pilar came into his life, I would help watch her daughter as well. I would help take Portia's daughter and Simon's two sons to school. While the kids are at school, I work around the house as the house manager. Y'all, y'all, listen. This is a straight from the A exclusive. I'm just letting you know. I'm going to water market. Don't worry. I just had to show y'all I had it. I just had to show y'all I had it. Anyway um and then okay she worked as the house manager i was in charge of managing things around the home taking care of the kids overseeing the vendors and anything else that needed to be done i work every day at the marital residence some days i work 10 11 hours a day and some days i spend the night at the home depending on what needs to be done i am always around i have traveled many times with portia and simon out of the country I went to so many places with them, including Europe, Costa Rica, and Mexico. The Guabadia kids and Portia's daughter would be with us as well. I am with them all the time. There was even a time when I traveled to Paris with Portia, Portia's daughter, and Simon. Simon is such a good man. I have never seen him be violent or angry at all. He is very mild-mannered. And just a nice guy. Ooh, can we say the same for Portia? We got evidence of Portia throwing microphone stands and stuff at people. But anyway, I'm digressing. Dragging people across the stage with a megaphone, child. What we need to see uh <laughs> look, beating up people in the alley, allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. Okay. Well, uh, well according to Jamie, she got beat up in the alley. Anyway. On February 22nd, 2024, Portia reached out to me. And see, this is tea because 
you know, the divorce was filed on the 23rd. Remember, it came out in People magazine on the 23rd, February 23rd. On February 22nd, 2024, Portia reached out to me and asked if I could stay in the house. A little later, she asked if I could come to the house around 4 p.m. and stay until 11 or 12 a.m. I told her that I would just sleep over at the house as I had to take the boys to school in the morning around 7 a.m. I was in the guest room that night. Portia came to me and said happy birthday because it was my birthday that day and she gave me flowers and we talked a bit. She then left the house that evening and never came back. Not caught Portia that packed up and left on the 22nd and then filed for divorce or the divorce finally hit the internet anyway on the 23rd. The next day on February 23rd, 2024, my, my phone started blowing up with people wondering what was going on when the news came out about the divorce. I had no idea. Look, the house staff didn't have no idea. Simon didn't have no idea. Nobody had no idea. Left on the lady birthday. The lady had been taking care of her daughter, taking care of Simon's kids, cleaning up, cooking. And you going to come in there and sing happy birthday and talk and chit chat, then leave and never come back. I'm just reading the affidavit now. This, this ain't my story to tell. This is the people's story to work at the house. <sighs> anyway, she goes on to say, I had to stay with the Gorbadia boys that day, February 23rd, 2024, because Portia left the night before and did not come back to the house. I could not leave the boys alone. Their father was traveling for work and Portia did not come back to the house. Whew. I could not go home to my house from Thursday, February 22nd, 24, until Monday, February 26, 2024, because Portia left the marital residence without telling me, and it was the week Simon's children were at the house. Simon returned to the house surprised of the divorce and without help from his wife with the children. Listen, I I don't make the news. I just blog about it, okay? Uh, she continues. I remember the first time that Portia came back to the house after she filed for the divorce. It was about two weeks later. He said, Portia said, F them kids. Portia said, F them kids. They is not my kids, okay? I am gone. I'm on mute. I can't be on mute. Y'all ain't heard me. I read this over on Patreon, friend. I haven't read this in the public. Okay, let me finish. Hey. Uh, on that day, two weeks later, Simon was working in his office. Portia parked the car outside the house. I did not know she was coming with a guy that day. Simon asked me, can you go and open the door for Portia and ask her what she needs and whether she needs to come inside the house? I went outside to meet Portia and I said, Simon is asking, do you need to come inside the house to get anything? And Portia says, she does not need to answer anything. And then she went inside the house with a security guy who had a gun. Oh, now Portia pushed past the dang housekeeper after she had told her happy birthday and then left her with the kids all weekend. Didn't even apologize or nothing. When she came inside the house, she came with the guy who had his gun showing. The man was a big guy who was walking like a bad guy. I don't know what that means, but I read it. He, she said it. I did not know that Portia was coming with a guy. This was out of nowhere. I had never seen this guy before. The guy was inside of the house sitting on the stairs with the gun showing. It was shocking with me. Yes, with the pow pow. Yes, with the pow pow. Highly disrespectful. I was concerned. Simon called the police. The police came to the house. The security that had already been working at the marital residence every day came back over to the house as well. The police met and spoke with everyone and then left. He said Portia was the babysitter his weekend, but he was out of town. 
when Portia said she was gonna stay, I don't know. That's their marriage. You saying she was the babysitter? She the stepmama, just like he the stepdaddy to Pilar. Okay, Portia expects for him to take care of Pilar and protect Pilar. Shouldn't he expect for Portia to take care of his kids? Aren't they one? Aren't they married in the eyes of the Lord? Didn't they have fifteen marriages? I'm just saying, well, husband and wife is different than boyfriend and girlfriend. You don't let your boyfriend keep your kids, but you'll let your husband keep his stepdaughter. Okay. <clears throat> Moving on. Hold on. Uh, when Simon's sons came home from school that day, I saw them observe the guy sitting on the stairs with his gun. The guy was sitting out in the open on the stairs inside the house with the gun showing. The children made some statements to me about the guy's presence, but I tried my best to explain it away to make sure they remained calm. After a few hours, Portia left the house that night with the guy around midnight. Like this video as y'all get in here. She did not stay. So many times they keep telling Portia didn't stay. She brought the guy with the gun. She picked up some clothes. She packed her bags and then she left again. That's the second time she didn't left. He said, sound like Simon Friend wrote this. This is the um, this is the um the maid, the housekeeper who has worked with Simon for several years and also worked for Portia. This is a filed affidavit with the court, so it will be in the divorce documents. Okay. Portia came back to the house another time and left with suitcases. She did not come back to the house for another two weeks. Then on another day when she came to the house, she came and brought a man who opened the front gate. Look, Portia, Portia keep bringing all these people over there. I know these people working in the house like, what the hell? What in tarnations is going on? This is so ghetto. Y'all bringing all of this to North, North Atlanta? Who does this? This almost as bad as Kim and Croy's uh, country ass. Almost. Big E. Chill out. Um, after that, I was with the children by myself in the house, and I did not feel comfortable being alone, not knowing if another man would come to the house. Damn, Portia, they brought all these men. A man had a gun. The man came and opened the gate. Just men everywhere. Portia keep bringing all these men to her house. We don't even know who these men are. So Simon changed the garage door code and the front door lock. On March 20, 2024, I received a voicemail message from a lady named Miss Jane. Hey, hold on. Let me give him a treat. Maybe he'll shut up. Who is Miss James? Miss James identified herself as Miss Williams' attorney. Here. The voicemail stated that she wanted to make sure I would be out of Simon's house by Friday, March 22nd, 2024, at 8.30 p.m. Not the Miss James. Who is Miss James? I thought Portia's attorney was Randy Kessler. Portia got all these random people calling the house, telling the people they got to get out the house by Friday the 22nd. She done told the maid she got to go. This is crazy. Now, uh, let me continue. The last time that Portia came to the house, she did not leave. <laughs> this was on Sunday, March 24th, 2024. She came with a guy to open the gate again. She came with her daughter, her mother, and her mother's boyfriend. She was bringing her stuff back into the house. The same guy opened the gate. Then they started searching the house. They went downstairs and disconnected the cameras around the house. The cameras are not working. This makes me uncomfortable because I am with the kids by myself as their nanny when their father is away at work. Now, what? Like, Portia, why is you? Didn't we talk about this last time? Now we got people corroborating the story. She done came in with her mama and the boyfriend and snatching cameras down. Child, oh, this is petty. Uh, last but not least, the foregoing statements are true and correct and based upon my personal knowledge of facts and I authorize its use for any and all purposes allowed by Georgia law. It is signed, sealed, and stamped, okay? This was filed with the court on April 1st. 
It is right here. In case y'all think I'm lying, it was filed with court, notarized, and everything. Hold on. So um, there's also a second person who um filed another affidavit as a witness. And let's see what that is. Hold on. Like this video as y'all getting in here. We just getting into a little tea. We just, you know, reading, trying to see what's going on. That's all we're doing. So this particular witness statement. Hold on. Let me find it. Let me make sure I got it. Recent download. Uh, I have so many court documents. So many court documents. Hold on, talk amongst ourselves. This Porsche situation is a mess, and I don't know what is going to happen. Okay, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Hold on, hold on. Um, what's this name? Oh, there it is. Right there. Okay, that was okay. This particular witness is from the security detail. Mm -hmm. So here it is, right here. So y'all can see it was filed with the court on the third. Okay, y'all see that little stamp at the top? It was filed with the court. Okay, so let me read it to y'all. Uh huh. Personally appeared before the understand. Blah 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 blah. My name is blank, but people call me blank. <laughs> I have a private security company, and I am a weapons training instructor. I am a veteran having served in the U.S. Army as a combat engineer. I spent eight years active duty. I have done private security all around the world. I provide executive protection services. I know Portia Diane Williams. Before Portia and Simon got married, I have personally provided security detail for Portia once before when I personally escorted her alone to an event. I have escorted both Portia and Simon to events to provide personal security. I began providing security services for both Portia and Simon beginning March 1st, 2023, when I started officially guarding their marital residence. I am at the house every day. I come in the evenings to guard the house and I leave the next day. If you're sleepy, go to bed. <laughs> one night I saw Portia leave in the middle of the night with one of Simon's Rolls Royces. Ooh, here comes the tea. She did not return to the house before my shift ended at 7 a.m. The same morning is when I later saw on social media that a divorce had been filed. So his story is lining up with the housekeeper because the housekeeper said she left and she didn't come back. And he's saying that, that he saw her leave in one of the Rolls Royces and she, boy, she wasn't back by the time he got off work at seven in the morning. I mean, she was gone all night. <laughs> On March 8th, 2024, I got off work that morning. I received a call from Simon about a man being at the house with a gun with Portia and the police being there. I got dressed and rushed to the marital residence to see what was going on. When I arrived at the house, I met Portia, Simon, the police, and the guy that came with Portia. Prior to that day, I did not know that he provided private security for Portia. I had never seen the guy at the house before. Simon told the police that he did not feel comfortable with the security guy being in the house with his gun and asked for the police to remain present until I arrived. He said she, she gave Simon his name back and keeping the house. Okay. When I arrived at the marital residence, we all met and talked and then the police left. Later that night, Portia packed up and left. On that day, March 8th, 2024, Simon was no threat to Portia or anyone nor was I a threat to anyone. Simon is a businessman. He is always very professional and kind. I have never seen him act out of pocket or be disrespectful to Portia, let alone anyone. I have never seen him be violent or even argue with anyone. So that was, you know, the, the statement. 
it says the foregoing statements are true and correct, blah, 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 same thing. And the affidavit, it was filed. So, um, yeah, these are the witness statements that were provided. Now, I don't know, you know, how they're going to work or whatever, but this emergency hearing that Simon had where he was trying to keep Portia at bay to, to um, filing for a restraining order, I, I don't think he got the restraining order, but I do know that uh, Portia is allowed was allowed to remain in the house, like I said earlier, until the case is tried. Proof of that is uh, she recently did an Amazon Live mm -hmm, where she was in, back in her um, closet again with the shoes that she took, took with her and brought back. Hold on, we're going to show you. I don't even know what she was talking about. Oh, she was talking about the Lord. Portion that found Jesus again. Hold on, let me see. So no matter what you're going to see is mine. Is there for you, okay? And Jesus Christ is nothing but my heat lights and cameras in front of me. But anyway, there she is. Uh, she was saying, you know, she believes in the Lord. She said she believes in the Lord and she was going through hard times. And now she is in there pitching her Amazon outfits and talking to the people. And uh, she was spilling a little tea, if y'all watch it. She was actually saying things about um, she wished that that Phaedra could rejoin the cast. She talks to Phaedra occasionally. Uh, what else did she say that I found interesting? Oh, she said that, um, you know, she wished that the Real Housewives of Atlanta could take a trip to Africa because she loves Nigeria so much. It felt like shade to her Nigerian soon to be ex-husband because she kept saying things about Nigeria and she wanted to go visit Nigeria. And, you know, it's the, the best thing about Nigeria is it's men. So I don't know if she got another Nigerian man on the horizon, but, you know, there's that. He says, safe, strong, Portia, we love you. Okay, you love her. I'm just like, but if she don't want that man, why don't she leave that man house? I'm just saying. I just, I don't know. If, if it was a situation where Simon had been caught cheating or caught doing something and, you know, was disrespectful to her or whatever, like, maybe I would be like, yes, Portia, keep the house. But now it's like she filed for divorce, didn't provide no type of reasoning. Then after he fought back and said he wasn't leaving the house, then all of a sudden it's, I don't feel, you know, you, you were supposed to protect me and I don't know you and I married a stranger. So it's really weird. I'm just not really feeling, you know, the way this is going. However, you know, Simon is fighting back. He's filed, you know, the cease and desist. He doesn't want Bravo or True Entertainment filming at his house. Okay. Uh, that's still his house. Okay. But I guess, you know, in light of that, uh, Portia can still film her, her, uh, pampered by Portia sheets, uh, commercial and do her social media content, which is what she's been doing. But there won't be any Bravo cameras there. He said, go on to Nigeria, Portia. You might get your butt kicked. Oh, not what go to <laughs> no, she, no violence. Now she wants the house and not him. They need to go back to the part where she was in all of Fallon's life, okay? Uh, I don't care what he would have done. I'm leaving that man's house. That's what I'm saying. Like, if he's supposed to be all these negative things that she's trying to convince us that he is, he ain't got no money. He a scammer. Why are you staying in that scam, scamming man's $7 million house? I would be terrified. What if the feds come and snatch the house? You living there with your daughter. I don't want to be in limbo. I want my house. Why can't you go get you a house, Portia? Anyway, uh, you said Portia's supposed to be Risa Tisa. I guess so. She said she don't know who she married, child. He said you don't believe. Portia, I don't believe you. But there's that. Well, salute to Portia for, you know, getting a little bit of what she wants. But this divorce, I don't know what's going to happen. I showed y'all Simon's attorney uh, the other day. You know, she's a She's a black uh, woman as well. I think she might be from Nigeria or somewhere, but she is representing Simon and she said she is not playing with Simon. She said that that the uh, when your clients say unleash the beast, she said she is on it, honey. But anyway, calm down, Biggie. Portia ain't taking your house. We don't know now. We don't know. Why don't she buy a new house? Y'all need to ask Portia that. Uh, stop acting like Portia is a decent person. 
I mean, I'm just trying to give people the benefit of the doubt. Like, yeah, she married him quickly. Yeah, it was a whirlwind romance. Yeah, he was still technically married when she got with him. Yeah, we saw it all play out on um, uh, Portia Family Matters. But, like, how did it get to this? Approximately a year later. I don't get it. But anyway, salute to Portia. Like this video as y'all get in here. Like this video. Portia's like, who the F did I marry? Mind your, your manners, Andrew. Stop using curse words. Uh, Portia already got a house. Okay. She let her mama move in. And clearly she, she knew she was going to need it. <sighs> now, moving on. Let's go ahead and talk about escape. Escape. Y'all know straight from the was one of the, well, was the first person, <laughs> the only person to uh, give y'all a little tea about Latasha filing this uh, trademark um, infringement notice, whatever it is, child, from Fox Rothschild. She sent it to Mona Scott Young, Mona Me Entertainment, and she sent it to Live Nation to refresh your memory. Here is a copy of the letter. That has been going around, okay? Shout out to all the people who gave straight from the A a uh, sufficient attribution, okay? That's all I ask is for attribution. If you ain't got it you got it from me, just, just tell the people you got it from me. Now, um, here's the letter. Basically, you know, it was saying that uh, Mona Scott Young, Mona Me Entertainment appears to be a co-promoter of the Queens and Arbit B Tour. Uh, she was saying that Mona Me Entertainment has specific knowledge of Latasha's ownership and rights to the mark because Mona Me Entertainment specifically obtained Latasha's consent to use the mark for a television series produced by Mona Me Entertainment. So there is uh, the proof right there that Mona at least knew that she had to get both of the uh, consent of both of the owners of the trademark. The trademark is owned by the two Scott sisters, Latasha Scott and Tamika Scott. They both secured the trademark when Candy no longer wanted to be in the group. When uh, they was actually touring along, it was just the two of them touring as escape. Tiny was at home having babies, Eris with, with T.I. Candy was on the Real House of Atlanta saying she would never reunite. So shoot, the, the two sisters were like, we got to give, we need to, we need need to travel so they actually trademarked the name okay i need to get credit for their research that's okay that's all right run latasha her money okay and the people who continue to report on this seemingly overlook this little quote right here that i put in quotes mona actually got latasha's ownership uh consent for the television show she got both of their consent and she knows damn well that she needs both of their consent. In addition, Mona Scott Young, the principal of Mona Me Entertainment, previously managed the damn group. <laughs> Escape. We can come to no other conclusion than to believe Miss Young and Mona Me's conduct is intentional and with the specific intent to interfere with the rights of Latasha. Now, where in any of that do you see that Latasha is suing Escape? I don't see where she's suing Escape. Do you see where she's suing Escape? She said that the Mona Scott Young, okay? Because at the end of the day, Mona knew that they had that she had to get both signatures. She got both signatures before. Why you didn't get both signatures this time? Okay, you got a picture, you you all in the middle of the group and stuff, you standing there, look at Mona right there in the middle of the group, like, like she done king or somebody, okay, messy Mona, and the crazy thing about this situation is Mona was the first person to respond, shout out to Justin Diego, Mona, uh, Justin Diego did his commentary on the situation. You know, he gave me attribution. Thank you so much, Justin Diego, binge worthy, uh, another binge worthy video. And binge worthy posted his reel on his page. My dog is driving me crazy. Hold on, Biggie, come here, come here, come here. I said, come here, 
But now he's going to shut up. So Ben Worthy posted that on his page. Let me see what Ben Worthy posted. Let me show you. <sighs> Shout out to Ben Worthy. Y'all know the drill. Copyright. Blah, 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 blah. So Ben Worthy posted this. We're going to look at it. Ben Worthy, don't, don't flag me, friend. <laughs> Hold on. Where it go? Hold on. Let me refresh. Okay. I thought I knew it. Escape in SWV. I can't After they failed to deliver the first go around, when things got way too rocky. You see what I did there? <laughs> So, you know, Binge Worthy is great at what he does. And even though I can't hear it, y'all can hear it um, in the comment section. Hold on, let's let's get a little bit more. Hell no. And here we go, y'all. Here we fucking go. Latasha, Latasha, Latasha Scott no. said, hold on, Mona. Not so fast, girl. Not so fucking fast. And I'm really, really hoping that you I love it. I love it. I love it. Hold you guys on. paid the extra twenty dollars and got insurance on your tickets because from the so um look in the comment section. Okay, he put no because all y'all team escape or team BBHM with this one are y'all and look who in the comment section right now. Mona Scott Young, best believe the show will go on. But this was funny. Great job on the edit. Like Mona. How you even know what what you doing over here lurking, lurking on the Instagram, Mona? That's giving me a uh, press. That's giving me you know you wrong. That's giving me a hit. Dog will holler. Okay, uh, not long after that, after Mona responded, next up came Candy Child. Candy did a post and delete, and basically, and basically, hold on, hold on. Like this video, like this video. Uh, hold on, talk amongst yourself for a second. I gotta let this dog out. All right, my bad, my bad. I apologize. I'm so sorry. My dog was acting up, but I'm back. Where was I? <laughs> I'm telling Big Yow, okay? Where was I, Handy? <clears throat> oh, oh, oh. So I don't know how Mona got it, okay? But uh, soon after Mona made her post, Candy did a post and delete candy was online and she posted this right here hold on we're going over the candy page you can hear this now okay and then i gotta go here why is it send me a code to my phone enter and i gotta go here that's what i get for logging out uh okay 
No, I'm going to share it. I am going to share it right here. Candy. Damn. All right. So uh, here is Candy. Candy posted this and deleted it. Okay. Uh, it first appeared on the Neighborhood Talk because they screenshot it and Candy went up under there and basically said, um, we're gonna do a we're gonna do a joint post in just a minute. And neighborhood talk didn't even know why they was posting it. Did nobody even uh know that Latasha had sent Mona Me and Live Nation a um the notice? Okay, and so people were automatically assuming that it was Escape who was being notified of the trademark action. So here here they are, honey. Candy posted this initially and deleted it. Despite all the rumors, Escape SWB, Queens of R&B Tour is definitely still on. Get your tickets now, blah, 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 blah. Neighborhood Talk said, oop, Tasha must be trying to stop their bag. Ain't nobody trying to stop their bag. Okay, you said that's probably why she deleted it. Okay, then they were like, well, we might as well put it back up. We might as well put it back up. So her and Tasha both put it up. And I don't know why they, you know, Candy, I mean, um, they left a uh, tiny off of it, but you know, there's that. It's but oh, they added her. So now Tamika Scott and Major Girl, it's on both of their pages. Let me see if it's on Major Girl page. Major Girl didn't put it. Oh, this, there it is. Okay, they did put it on the page. Okay, there it is right there. Okay, Tamika Scott, despite all the rumors, blah 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 blah. They said a co-owner of a trademark is unable to maintain an infringement action against another co-owner of the same mark did you hear that against another co-owner ain't nobody at this particular junction nobody even mentioned escape nobody even mentioned tamika nobody even mentioned any of that for all of these people jumping bad because mona <laughs> mona got the notice so all of a sudden they put this little powerpoint presentation up and said, uh, each co-owner has the right to exercise its trademark rights, including granting licenses to third parties, i.e. Live Nation and Mona Me. <sighs> a valid licensee of one co-owner of a trademark cannot be liable to another co-owner for infringement. So if you're going to stand on business and say that Tamika is able to license a trademark that both she and her sister owns, then that would lead me to believe that Latasha could be able to do the same thing. And that doesn't make sense, does it? Like if one person is benefiting financially and they both own the trademark, how is it that the other person uh, is, you know, is not liable in some way or the people who actually uh, were assigned licenses have to pay the other co-owner. They got to pay both of the co-owners. I don't understand what people aren't getting with this, with my fake legal degree. And the fact of the matter is that Latasha hired a real attorney. Latasha didn't go to the court of public opinion, i.e. the internet, to sell y'all fake dreams and make y'all think she was suing escape. <laughs> she did not do that. So it's like, it's weird for me to even see this. It's like, did anybody even read the letter? It said Mona knows she's supposed to get both signatures and she did not she's holding those people accountable she don't care about uh 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 tamika tamika ain't got no money <laughs> it's about business okay um you hope latasha do, i hope she do too child i hope she do something but at the end of the day it's like she ain't gotta sue only thing she gotta do is sit home and make the money that's all she gotta do they gotta pay them as a foursome even if they are threesome, they got to pay them as four people. So um, I don't know why everybody mad. I don't know why the internet mad. I don't know why people, you know, out there trying to make it seem like Latasha is such a bad person and she a diva. She's this. Latasha hasn't said three words. She said nothing. She let her attorney speak for her. So why is everybody jumping on the bandwagon? Now people want to spread rumors about that lady talking about she broke, she did, she that. It's like, business is business and so anybody who would sit there and defend this clearly does not have a business because as a business owner myself who actually owns a trademark if whoever's name is on the trademark that is who's getting paid for the licensing okay one of my earrings fell off that's okay 
<laughs> um, and you know, there's that. So it doesn't. It none of this matters. None of these these rumors that y'all got floating around. None of that matters. None of these people talking about you know Rocky did this or Rocky said that. You know, none of that matters. None of the stuff y'all talking about some thirty thousand dollars matters. None of these rumors y'all talk about talking about her mama stole from her. None of that matters. My thing is, how you fall out with your mama and your sister over something we still ain't seen no receipts about over a reality show because you was broke. Now you with the rich girls. Now you with Candy. Now now Candy has finally divided and conquered and got the other sister on her side. It's just a mess, honey. It's a mess. And I'm just saying, all y'all keep talking about Latasha had lied on Candy. Latasha didn't lie on Candy. Latasha lied about lying. <laughs> Allegedly. Candy not liking Michelle or vice versa doesn't matter. Okay, none of that matters. Okay, business is business. Stay on business. Stay on business, Mona. Mona Scott ain't ish. People don't read. She owns the rights and she is legally obligated to be paid. Mm -hmm. All I'm saying is they posting all these PowerPoints. The more you know. Okay, the more you know, send that to an attorney. <laughs> Send that to an attorney. Don't be sending it to, to the internet. That makes no sense to me. Why would you send this to the internet? Uh, Candy, Latasha, all of y'all who posted this. And it's giving me, everybody went off of emotion because at the end of the day, nobody even knew about the letter. I posted the letter and yeah, Binge Worthy posted it. A few people were talking about it on, on YouTube, but uh mona was the first person to, to say something and then next thing you know they putting all this up and the instagram blogs can't even catch up <laughs> a mess honey a whole mess oh you said because they want their tickets to sell Ooh, let's talk about that is the tickets not selling because why is it the tour hasn't even started and the tickets have been highly discounted. The tickets is on Groupon. Like, why are the tickets on Groupon? Hold on. You know we do our investigative research over here. So I'm going to pull up. I'm just because y'all know people can, people can make up stuff, okay? People can doctor stuff. I'm on the Groupon website. You see my little notifications over there, my deal of the days and stuff. Hold on. Let me type in Escape X. Let's see, oh, 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 there it is right there. I ain't even finished typing the words. The Queens of R&B Escape and SWV is on sale for 39% off. It went from $41 to $25. And I am not hating on Groupon because I love me some Groupon. I be on there getting all my spa stuff, child. That's why all the spa stuff came up. So all I be looking for is all, all the massages and the facials and everything. But look at this. Child, they ain't even started selling. They ain't even started the tour and it's already on sale. $25. So you know they're going to sell out because the tickets ain't for $25. And the tickets ain't for $25. How much money they making? <laughs> this why Candy allegedly claims she left the Real Housewives of Atlanta after she got fired. Is this why Candy left so she could tour around the world and get $25 a seat in the <laughs> and split it six ways <laughs> is this why y'all tell me it's 25 dollars? i might go for 25 dollars. <laughs> i might go for 25 dollars, y'all mm -mm. anywho she's worldwide child. she's worldwide uh what happened how does candy even have the time since she is so busy Oh, now it's twenty dollars in Buffalo. Oh, how much is it in your city? You know they going. They got thirty cities. It might be cheap. It might be fifteen somewhere else. They just trying to get them them seats and them tickets so they can say they sold out Madison Square Garden. They sold out Lakewood Amphitheater. Theater. They sold out this. They sold out that. They sold out because the tickets ten dollars. Everybody gonna be there. <laughs> Shoot. Impress me, be be five hundred dollars and up like Beyonce. Okay, um, you said wait until it's two for twenty five. <laughs> well, 
Well, apparently, I guess that's why they all on their social media telling y'all and running to you real quick to let y'all know that the tour is still on because apparently these tickets ain't selling. That's the gag. And um, I'm sure uh, Latasha want the tickets to sell so she can get her money. Mm. Anyway, I'm digressing. I'm digressing. But y'all let me know. I mean, whether you like Latasha or don't like Latasha, the facts are the facts. She, you know, she owns half of the trademark. If it was Candy and Tiny and the situations were reversed and everybody was on tour except Candy, you best believe Candy would have made a big stink and would have filed in a letter to Live Nation and Mona Scott too. Okay. Uh, I like Latasha too. And the crazy thing is the lady been silent. The lady been doing Christmas albums. She ain't been calling nobody out. She ain't been calling nobody no liar. The lady been doing gospel songs so she won't have to, you know, do R&B and be, you know, bumping heads with her escape sister. She said she left for a minute because she wanted to do her own thing. She wants to sing. She wants to use her voice, okay? But yeah, it's like always Candy, Latasha, they always trying to do something to hold her back. And I don't like that. She ain't said nothing for at least a year, if not two. I haven't said a word. But you got Candy still over there doing little stuff behind the scenes. You got to remember, Candy is all about alliances. And I know y'all think I don't like Candy. I like Candy. I think she's smart as shit because clearly she knows how to separate people and get them on her side in order to take down an opponent. She did it with Nene Leakes. <laughs> She did it with Nene Leakes. Come on. Like she's doing the exact same thing she did on the Housewives for all this these years over with Escape. She never wanted to be a part of Escape before now. When Candy, you know, was refusing to, to tour with Escape, nobody was saying that Candy was being a diva. When Candy did her solo album, nobody was saying that Candy was problematic. When Candy was sleeping with Jermaine Dupree and his daddy, allegedly, nobody was... <laughs> Nobody was dragging her. Like y'all, y'all keep saying that Latasha is the reason the group is broke up. I'm saying it was Candy. Very manipulative. Okay. I'm saying it was Candy. If it wasn't for Candy doing things and 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 uh manipulating relationships behind the scenes and trying to get you know lead vocals when Latasha was the lead vocalist at the time. There wouldn't be no problems, but you know, there's problems and the problems would never be resolved. And if it wasn't for Candy's uh, vagina being a topic of discussion, Candy would would never feel a ways about it. Okay. If it wasn't for Latasha going on V103 and spilling the tea about what really broke them up, it wouldn't be an issue. It would not be an issue, but yet here we are. Um, Meanwhile, it is not escape without all four of them and anybody who, you know, and I get it. The, 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 um, the tour is probably good. The performance is probably good, but it would be amazing if all four of them were there, you know, they harmonize, they're a group. Okay. Uh, you said, Michelle said, I said that earlier, the hot mic told the story. Okay. I'm um, mic I'm um, mic Okay. Everything Candy D does is manipulative, and she you know, listen. She's strategic. You got to give it to her. She, Candy is all about a coin. She's all about her money, and she's all about winning. She does not like to lose. And in this escape situation, she could have just sat idly by and said, "I don't want to tour with them. I'm never going to tour with them," like she did. But she saw they were successful as a threesome. She saw that Escape Three was doing what needed to be done, and then all of a sudden, now she wants to be back in the group when Jermaine Dupri and them wanted to do a, a biopic. Come on now, that we're not gonna go through history and change history because we know what history is. But anyway, I'm digressing. Um, I will take a few calls. Y'all, let me know what you think of this Escape situation and um. I want to know how y'all feel about people ignoring the fact of she's not trying to stop escape. She's trying to get, you know, get what's owed to her one way or the other, whether it be, okay, inviting me to sing or at least asking me, they didn't give her an opportunity to turn it down. She said before that she was on hiatus. She was taking a break to do her, her gospel album. They know the gospel album ain't done. And then you're going to negotiate a tour without even telling the fourth member of the group who have been in the group for 30 years alongside all of y'all. That is wrong. I'm sorry. I don't care. I don't care if you like her. I don't care if you love her. I, it's wrong. 
not go lay down. Why would she go lay down? You need to tell Candy to go lay down. <laughs> tell Candy to go lay down. Candy to what? Uh, manipulating people and breaking up families. <laughs> Got this sister lying on the other sister just to just because she hungry and need the need the dollars in the sense. Mona uh offering method man to be on her, her uh her single that did do nothing just to you know appease her and promise her riches and diamonds and gold. Okay, I'm just saying y'all pay attention to what's going on. Um, but anyway uh click the link to join okay let me know what you think about this escape dispute also let me know what you think about portia and simon's update and portia being allowed back in the house honey would you want to be in that man's house you don't know what may happen i don't want to be there and he can still come and go mm -mm, i don't need to be there hold on uh i make up lunny make up lunny Hello? Hey Michelle, this is my first time Ooh, catching you live. Uh oh. Speak. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. This is my first time catching you live. We love watching you it every every day. We go way back just to watch you every day. Oh, thank you. You're welcome, girl. But I just wanted to hop on and ask because I saw somebody else in the comments ask what was on the hot mic with Candy and Latasha. I missed that. No, that was with Candy and um, Candy and Cynthia. Oh, remember the um, a mic, the mic. I know I'm echoing a little bit. I gotta do something about this thing. Now. Um, um. Oh, she uh, she was hiding. Um, uh, her and Cynthia was plotting against Nene Leaks. You gotta go back. What season was that, y'all? Put it in the chat. And um, her Cynthia was talking to Nene, but she spoke with Candy first. And Candy was trying to tell her, "Don't tell Nene something." I don't remember, but anyway, they had the hot mic, and uh, the Real Housewives of Atlanta played it. Mm, so Candy just so shady all the time. Mm -hmm. She's very shady. Well, thank you, Michelle. Bye. The season twelve finale. Thank you so much, John John. Well, thank you for calling, Lonnie. Thank you. Okay. Yes, the uh, mic, the mic. I don't know. Everything is going wrong today, but that's okay. Um, anybody else want to call in? Anybody else would like to call in? Let me know. Uh, let me see what y'all are saying in this chat. Candy will be back on Bravo NBC with deals and dollars. Okay, well, let Candy be back on. That's what Candy want to be. Candy got fired. Candy need to be back on Bravo. If she was back on Bravo, she wouldn't be on tour with Escape. I assure you that. <laughs> Since all y'all keep saying that Candy got all this money. <laughs> Why is she working so hard? She got all this money. Don't nobody want to be all over the all over the world touring and splitting in six ways. Uh, Cynthia wanted Candy and her to be on the same page on how Candy, Ken, Kenya ended up at the party. You're right, Charlie. Listen, it's been so long. You know, I got housewives history in my brain. I be forgetting. All I know is they was plotting and planning, honey. Uh, Portia staying in that house is ridiculous. Michelle, why do you dislike Candy? I do not dislike Candy. I just dislike some of the things that she does. And what, listen, y'all act like Candy can't be held accountable. Just because Candy got a lot of these bloggers in her pocket and sending them fried chicken and boiled eggs, don't mean that I can't tell the truth about her. I don't want her fried chicken or her devil eggs. Like, come on, be for real. Um, The Seagram's party. Yep, the Seagram's party. Uh, this is the link right here. If you would like to join the stream, hold on. We have someone in the background. Who is this? Oh, I know who this is. Now you can change the name. Hold on. Hello. What's up, Michelle? What's up? Hey, name? listen, you've been doing it, ain't you? What I did? You just, you've been living your best life. You know, okay. I know. Yeah, yeah, I, I love it. Hey, Michelle, your braids look good as hell. I Thank I you. think you should bring the, the braids back for real, for real. That's your signature. They look good. I even Thank saw you. when you was on a little thing, the one with, you was up there with the with your your, your uh Josh Nam and 
lady was like, I like your hair. He was like, thank you. Yeah, that do look good on you, Michelle, for real. Thank you, Mr. Motivation. So uh, with the topics, I guess I got almost, well, you know what I, okay. Hey, my first thing, or well, my opinion about the uh, escape stuff, like, do you think uh, she'll end up, uh, Latasha end up singing with them? You think they'll probably work it out? I mean, because I mean, it's only right. I it's you... possible. They, listen, they let Candy come back. Candy said never. Yeah, well, you're right. Yeah. I think it's going to work out. I feel like, you know, but you, again, you I ain't trying to be deep, but you or know. How about she just stay home and, and collect the check? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, But see, I don't think they want her to do that. You know what I'm saying? They, they'll fear you. To, they come on, we talking about Candy, and I like Candy, but you know, Candy, like, that ain't fair. I mean, if you think about it. I mean it business wise, take your feelings out of business wise, that's that's what it's supposed to be. So but yeah, that's yeah. And uh what was, what was your other topic? Because you didn't talk <laughs> about oh, portion Simon. Hey, so Simon. you think this stuff, you think that so you think it's for real. They done done for real, huh? Well, I mean, I, I guess, yeah, I'm just like shit, it's just that was, you know, it was fast. But I feel like Portia, she, hey, she thought it was green on the other side. You know, she, she, hey, she got hot for Simon or what? You know, women love to see brothers with money. You know, yeah, don't nobody want nobody broke. But I feel like Portia was like, I'm finna get with the winning team, and so I, hey, and so I feel like it backfired. It backfired. I don't know what that man do to make his money. Not my business, but. I don't think he's a scammer. Mm -hmm. And even if it was in the past life, and we all did, you know what I'm saying? So with me. Huh? I said, yeah, I said, we all have done, you know, different things. You know what I'm saying? So it's like if he whatever happened in the past, that was before you. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. But um, yeah, I think I and honestly, I don't really think I feel like Portia, she went over there. It wasn't what she thought it would have been. I'll say that. She liked the luxury, but Portia like a hot girl, city girl, excuse me. She like a city girl. And ain't nothing wrong with it, but I feel like Dennis, he was more her speed stilo, I'll say that. You know what I'm saying? I guess, yeah, like, yeah, I think she kind of, shit, it's a sense of being with somebody and you look at them and realize it's not really what I wanted and it definitely would, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I just feel like Portia thought it was green on the other side and hell it backfired in the face you can't play hmm. with god children not even putting god in it but you know you can't be trying to get with somebody for a wrong reason and think it's gonna prosper no that's just gonna crumble because you all living for the wrong thing because my like you said on uh patreon if you love somebody why the hell should that even matter you know Man, if, if i, yeah, like, me, like, if I love that, him he gonna be deported i'm gonna be right there with him that, if that, that's, that's true. what you know what michelle we old school Hey, and I feel like that's how back, you know, hey, Michelle, our mamas and grandmas and aunts and uncles, they fought through marriage. They prayed. They got counseling. These people now, you got to have this best body, best face. You know what I'm saying? You got to have this much money. It ain't, it's, hey, we live in a, uh, 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 what kind of, it's like a cyber society. And mm -hmm. when I say that, cyber's internet. So everything that look good, glitz and gowns and showing all your, monies and on your yachts and stuff folks get a throb off of that you know what i'm saying but you know i feel you gotta really get to know a person from deep within and you know go to dates and you know you know what we, old school meet at the go to the movies and stuff like that but yeah michelle i know i'm, I'm gonna get off her hey, if you're going you going to patreon <laughs> hey, I, michelle, I need you i need I to get a to 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 say, you going to i'm gonna go to patreon tomorrow Okay, that's cool. Yeah. All right, Michelle. Hey, I'm proud of you. You've been on it. I ain't going to lie to you. And I know I did like live in your videos party. the past it's two days. Good. I'm like, oh. Yeah. And that's and that's still count. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, yeah, shit. It take a lot to be in front of our faces. <laughs> you know, going live, being in the camera, setting it up. But all right, Michelle. You have a good I night. Appreciate and I'll you, see you. Motivation. I'll see you next week because I, I know you. And so I'll probably see you Monday or Tuesday. You say I'll be on there tomorrow, Michelle. Get your rest this weekend. All right. I hope Thank Mama Brown friend. doing good. Love you. Talk to you later. Thank you. Love you, too. All right, bro. Shout out to my ride or dies. Y'all know I had to put a little speaker on on my computer because 
my uh external speaker is dead <laughs> and i can't find a cord i can't charge it up right now so i'm glad that nobody else called okay but um yes this live has been you know i just wanted to let y'all know what was going on because apparently everybody is not telling y'all the full story about this letter and what it entails and perhaps y'all should actually read the letter before you think that you know she's coming after the co-owner she coming after uh mona scott young and live nation and maybe tamika scott might be next but it, it would seem that um that one of co-owner can't use the trademark without the other co-owners agree agreeing to it like sure one can use it and the other you know can decide whatever whatever but if they are co-owners of anything the other person has to be agreeable to it especially when there is dollars involved come on it just doesn't make sense and anybody saying why is junkie don't even saying her bus got report because he they ain't got nothing else child because probably candy called him and told him to say it child, whatever I don't even know why y'all would, would uh, why would y'all believe somebody who got a perpetual uh running nose <laughs> nose running for 12 months of the year just just not coming out the nose just the booger sugar running out the nose why would you believe anybody that say that but it's entertaining i understand people are more entertained by the lies than they are the truth and that's okay that's okay i just appreciate that my audience uh likes to think and you know it is what it is just think about it you know again you don't have to like the woman you ain't even got to believe that you know she did or didn't take thirty thousand dollars you ain't got to like her husband you ain't got to like none of that but business is business and if two people co-own the trademark both people on the trademark need to be paid and compensated in some way period that's just what it is um and uh there's that you said yes business partners is key co-owner is key exactly co-owner is key let look we can we can reference the stuff that went on with uh ts man and kaya y'all remember the stuff with the trademark and then ts man had bought the trademark was trying to trademark it without kaya's name on it and stuff and that's why kaya got mad so it's like both people need to be involved if they are partners Actually, all four of Escape should have been on there, but since Candy didn't want to be bothered, Tiny didn't care at the time, it was just the two sisters. That's how it happened. I don't think they were trying to be shady by not putting all four people on there. I literally think they were just doing it because they were touring together as Escape at the time. <sighs> anyway, y'all like this video, please, and thank you. And um, thank everybody who has uh, used Straight From The A as a source more is coming i'm gonna start putting my stuff on the website since you know instead of giving it to y'all for free then y'all come on my youtube channel and taking it at like you ain't even get it from over here but i have learned a valuable lesson and shout out to binge worthy for convincing me <laughs> binge worthy like put it on your site child i'm like okay i just put it on the site i got i'm like i got this tea i got this tea you better watermark it and put it on the website Anyway, uh, I appreciate y'all. Y'all enjoy the rest of your Saturday. And uh, if you are just getting here, like this video, subscribe to my channel if you are not subscribed. Also leave your comment down below. Let me know what you think about the escape members responding to this trademark drama, even though it was addressed to Mona Scott Young and Live Nation. I would also like to know how you feel about Portia and Simon and the judge allowing Portia to remain in the house while the divorce and uh, is being decided. Shoot, I don't even know why she would want to be in the house, but hey, she is not me. Okay, it's a seven million dollar house. I guess you get it how you can, and I get it, get it how you can. All right. Anyway, I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you, squad. Good night. Shaggy is in, bitch. Shaggy is in. Shaggy is These people don't like me, she have a that's my <laughs> Go to sleep. It's late in Atlanta. Good what? night. Hey, what's up, y'all? I am your girl Candy. Hanging out with Straight from the A, you know. I love Straight from the A. Where you from? I'm straight from the A. A town. I like this bad. That's better. What's going down? Straight from the A.
Hey, oh. wait, wait. No, what okay. you want to say? Here we go. Hey, I'm Dr. Heavenly, and this is Straight from the A. 